Hi, this is Nicholas Bell with Ion Cinema, here to review Coming to America, the sequel to the 1988 comedy classic that starred Eddie Murphy and was directed by John Landis. Uh, this time, Craig Brewer, who uh, also recently directed Eddie Murphy in Dolomite Is My Name, uh, takes the helm of this sequel 33 years later. Uh, it was a Paramount production that was supposed to come out in August of 2020, uh, was bought by Amazon Prime, and is being released March 5th, 2021. Uh, so we meet uh, Prince Akeem and Zamunda uh, kind of living a comfortable life in his kingdom with his wife Lisa, played by Sherry Headley from the first film. They have three daughters, uh, their oldest uh, Mika, played by Kiki Lane, uh, their second daughter Oma is played by Murphy's own daughter Bella Murphy. Um, James Earl Jones resurrects his role as the king, and he's uh, about he's on his deathbed. Uh, meanwhile, there are, are rumblings in the kingdom because the next door neighbors, with which they have a, a trade embargo, uh, the the next Dorians, uh, which are lorded over by uh, General Izzy, uh, played by Wesley Snipes, uh, basically demand that. Uh, the kingdoms reunite by having one of Akeem's daughters marry his son, played by Rotimi. Uh, but Eddie Murphy uh, refuses that offer, but he doesn't have a male heir. Uh, so war is rumbling in the distance. Um, James Earl Jones uh, says he wants to celebrate his funeral before he actually passes. So there's this uh, grand celebration where Morgan Freeman is narrating as James Earl Jones looks on and performances from Salt and Peppa and Vogue and uh, Gladys Knight. Uh, at the same time, uh, a witch doctor of sorts uh, that is a henchman of the kings uh, has seen a vision that there is an illegitimate son that uh, Akeem had from his time in late 1980s Queens, uh, where he was out with his uh, uh, his right hand man Semi, played by Arsenio Hall, of course. And uh, after they taken some drugs, uh, he impregnated a woman, Mary, played by Leslie Jones. Uh, so he goes to Queens to meet his son, Lavelle Johnson, played by Jermaine Fowler, uh, and basically within a matter of minutes convinces both. Uh, Lavelle and Mary to come back to Zamunda where they will groom him to be a prince and then uh, Mary, uh, Tiana Taylor playing uh, Bapoto, the daughter of King, uh, uh, of General Izzy. All of that's going on and all is well that ends well and it, it relates to the uh, motifs of the first film um, having to do with marrying out of love and not uh, an arranged marriage, etc. Uh, with also putting away archaic, misogynistic uh, traditions of the past is, uh, of course, a major theme in this. Uh, if you're a fan of the first film, uh, you're of course going to love this. Everybody that was involved seems to be having a fun time. I'd say that Wesley Snipes is a definite highlight, much like he was in Dolomite. Um, however, I think the, uh, the real star is the costume design by Ruth E. Carter because it is extravagant. Uh, Kiki Lane and Tiana Taylor uh, the wardrobe on just those two characters alone is, you know, for lack of a better word, breathtaking. Uh, at the same time, there's a, a lot of heavy use of CGI that kind of uh, goes against the... it takes you out of the film. And overall, I think it's lacking some of the magic of the original. Uh, but that said, you have Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall doing their thing, playing all these different characters that are resurrected from the first film. Um, so it is uh, enjoyable to watch a huge supporting cast, uh, Lou Nell, Tracy Morgan, uh, of course Sherry Headley comes back, John Amos, Vanessa Bell Calloway, um, Rick Ross is uh, in a minor role because all of the uh, palace scenes are actually filmed on his estate, uh, which is very impressive. Um, Jermaine Fowler unfortunately has the, uh, is, is playing a character that probably the least developed, and uh, th there are a lot of um, cutting corners with his character and the woman he eventually falls in love with, which might detract some, uh, but if you're just approaching this for the nostalgic factor, uh, you know, it d definitely doesn't disappoint. Uh, great soundtrack. Uh, overall, I would give Coming to America three out of five stars. Thank you. Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.